In the last three years, there's been quite a lot of somewhat bizarre discoveries coming out of James Webb Space Telescope. Discoveries that nobody expected, discoveries that are somewhat difficult to explain even today, and of course discoveries that kind of redefine our understanding of the entire universe. But one of the strangest discoveries that we're still having trouble explaining is right here. This is referred to as a little red dot. Hundreds of very strange objects discovered by the James Webb only visible to the James Webb, whose origin is still not entirely clear. You can actually explore some of these previous explanations in the video in the description, but today we're going to discuss a relatively new discovery that maybe just maybe takes us a little bit closer to actually understanding what's happening here and possibly finds a missing link. But in order to connect all of these events and in order to help you understand why this is important, let's actually talk about something that happened almost seven decades ago, when radio astronomy was just starting. And this was sometimes in the 1950s. Back then, some of the first radio dishes became operational and essentially started to observe the universe with radio light, allowing scientists to finally see through everything because radio light generally goes through all of the gas and all of the dust that usually blocks optical emissions. And though at first they started to discover a bunch of galaxies and a bunch of never-before-seen stars, they also started to discover a few anomalous objects. And here is actually a picture of one of them, 3C273. This somewhat bizarre star made absolutely no sense, at least back then. And it actually made no sense and to some extent even broke physics. And it actually made no sense and even broke physical models for several reasons. First of all, this object was emitting a lot of radiation in a lot of different frequencies which was kind of difficult to explain. Yet when the researchers tried to look at this with the optical telescope, there was basically absolutely nothing. It wasn't producing any optical emissions, or at least nothing that was easily visible. And though one of these objects did actually contain a very dim point, even here, the observations were somewhat mysterious. And especially mysterious because of the observations of the spectral lines. Here, this concept refers to the very specific wavelengths that are usually emitted by certain elements or certain molecules. For example, the famous 21 centimeter wavelength refers to the hydrogen line. But these strange objects, which were now discovered by the dozen, all seem to contain very bizarre spectral lines of essentially elements or molecules nobody could explain back then. In many cases, these were wavelengths that were just extremely different from anything that was predicted. And so here this created a major mystery, a mystery of somewhat bizarre stars that all kind of resembled this, but stars with very strange, very powerful emissions containing unusual chemical elements and a few other anomalies. For example, quite a few of them dramatically and rapidly changed their luminosity, especially in the X-rays. Or basically they were blinking and changing the amount of emissions like no other star we've ever seen. Moreover, when researchers used what's known as interferometry or essentially used various telescopes to try to measure their overall size, they also realized that these objects are kind of small. The limit on their size was no larger than the entire solar system, so basically less than one light year across. Yet despite of this, they seem to contain extremely high power density and emissions that we've never seen from any star anywhere. Which is why researchers in the 50s and in the 60s started to refer to these as QSO, quasi-stellar object. Kind of like a star, but not really a star. And by 1960, hundreds and hundreds of such objects have already been recorded and published, yet there was still no explanation. And it was actually only in 1963 that at least one of these objects was finally linked to some kind of a relatively dim blue star, but once again containing a lot of strange emissions of molecules or elements that nobody could explain. It's as if they actually contain entirely different chemistry. Not carbon, not oxygen, not hydrogen, but actually elements we've never seen anywhere on Earth. And it was the observations of this anomalous spectrum that created the biggest problem. How could there be stars containing elements or compounds or molecules we've never seen anywhere? But then, within just a few years, researchers finally cracked the mystery. Because here these wavelengths appear to be redshifted. Here, the object known as 3C273 seemed to contain hydrogen wavelengths that were redshifted by 15.8%. And it appeared that quite a lot of other wavelengths were redshifted by the same amount. 
with similar discoveries suddenly made in a lot of these other QSOs, and in some cases redshifts were really high. But the only way this would make sense is actually if these objects were moving super super fast. For this object it had to be 47,000 kilometers per second. And so if this was a physical motion of a star in our galaxy, this basically made no sense because our galaxy is not big enough for the star to travel for such a long time. Which meant that the only possible explanation for these objects was their distance. Maybe these were super far away from us and moving away from us at very high velocities while also producing ridiculous amounts of energies so they could be detected from very far distances. As a matter of fact, this object was even discovered in ancient photographs going back to 1900s and it was in exactly the same location which actually suggested that it hasn't moved across the galaxy at all. It must have been super far away, which for astronomers in the 1960s created a new mystery. What exactly could produce such enormous powers? Here we're talking about an object very very far away, moving super fast away from us, and an object that's only one light years across. Much much smaller than a typical galaxy. And it was really only in 1964 that some of the initial propositions started to be made. This was actually made completely independently by researchers studying hypothetical black holes and what they can actually produce, with the Soviet Yakov Zadovich, whose study we recently discussed in one of the videos in the description, that made a proposition involving massive black holes, potentially forming what's known as an accretion disk, where a lot of infalling matter can start producing ridiculously powerful emissions. Intriguingly, at first, this idea was basically rejected by most astronomers, because back then black holes were extremely hypothetical. But study after study, things started to make sense. And within about 20 years after their initial discovery, by 1970s, several independent studies and various pieces of evidence started to explain this somewhat bizarre mystery. First, all of these observations confirmed that these objects are super far away and super small. There was also a confirmation that all of them were moving away from us at very high velocities, up to 100,000 kilometers per second, basically one third of the speed of light, which surprisingly served as a major confirmation for the Big Bang theory that was actually being debated at this point, and the idea behind the expansion of the universe and the Hubble's law. As a matter of fact, it was these quasars that finally provided needed visual evidence. And so if this redshift was due to the expansion of the universe, and these objects were super far away and very bright, the only thing that had enough power to produce all of this energy had to be the hypothetical supermassive black hole. Because a distant, extremely powerful object was the only possible explanation that aligned with all of the evidence. This could not be a small star just because it was moving way too fast. And so sometimes in mid-1970s, this officially established the idea behind quasars. With additional explanations eventually establishing that it was really the angle of observations that made certain of these quasars and other similar objects somewhat different. And so all of this was the result of the very powerful jet and the very powerful accretion disk. And if we're looking directly at the jet, we're seeing a blazer. If we're looking a little bit away from it, we're usually observing one of these quasars, and if we're seeing it from the side, it seems to appear as some kind of a safer 2 galaxy or a radio galaxy. So massive black holes, viewing angle, an expanding universe suddenly explained everything we know about the universe. And while as of today, nearly a million quasars is known to us, with pretty much all of them exhibiting extremely similar patterns. With pretty much all of them showing us very similar properties and exhibiting very similar patterns. And although this mystery took over 20 years to solve, because of the new observations from the James Webb, we're now faced with new mysteries, kind of similar to those first observations of quasars back in the 50s. And that's of course the discovery of these little red dots and a lot of other similar objects. Here these objects also seem to be relatively small, extremely compact, but in many cases actually seem to possess properties different from what we expect from a quasar. Once again, some of the videos in the description discuss this mystery in a bit more detail. But in a nutshell, James Webb discovered a bunch of these AGNs, or active galactic nuclei, that we now refer to as little red dots, and the name here explains everything. They're small, they're red, and they only seem to be visible to the James Webb, or basically only visible in the infrared. No other telescope has ever seen these before. But compared to a classical quasar, they're actually even smaller, dimmer, and most importantly, hidden by a lot of dust. 
This is not what we usually observe around quasars. And because of this bizarre mystery, scientists in the last few years have been trying to figure out if this is somehow connected to quasars and maybe evolves into them, or if this is an entirely different object that possibly becomes something entirely different in the modern universe. As a matter of fact, as of today, nobody has any idea what exactly this is and what it becomes. It could be some kind of a star cluster, it could be some kind of a growing supermassive black hole, or it could be something entirely different. But in order to solve this mystery, we needed new observations and new potential links. Some kind of a connection between two different types of AGNs that possibly have some properties from both quasars, galaxies, star clusters, or something else. And what looks like now we potentially have some examples that could start answering some of these questions. A new hidden population of unusual objects that once again have never really been seen before and are currently referred to as shell cues. So borrow high redshift exploration of low luminosity quasars, which in this case, as the name suggests, was actually discovered by the Japanese Subaru telescope. And here this telescope initially discovered them as barely visible blobs located in the early universe approximately 1 billion years after the Big Bang. And what made these galaxies somewhat unusual is the fact that they didn't really resemble typical quasars, but their intensity of light was way too high to be coming from the star formation alone. So essentially here something else was causing these objects to be way too bright. But unfortunately Subaru was not powerful enough to establish exactly what the light was coming from. However, it was assumed to be a supermassive black hole. And it was the observations from James Webb that finally allowed the scientists to see what's happening here, reanalyzing these objects once again and confirming the initial assumptions. Here scientists definitively confirmed the presence of gas that was moving under the influence of an extremely massive compact object a supermassive black hole. So these were definitely confirmed to be AGNs, active galactic nuclei, but a type of AGNs we've never seen before. Out of 13 of these distant galaxies, 9 displayed very clear signs of active supermassive black holes, and more importantly, the pattern of light produced inside of these objects was extremely similar to much older quasars. But quasars that were actually hidden by dust. In other words, it actually suggested that these objects are baby quasars, or at least quasars that seem to be hidden by a dust cloud. Objects that appear to be just as bright as quasars, but with levels of dust we actually observe in a lot of these other objects such as little red dots. Which to the scientists behind this paper implied maybe two things. First of all, this could be that connection we needed to possibly explain little red dots. Maybe at least some of them do become quasars, and maybe this is what quasars initially started as. But second of all, this also suggested that many of these quasars are still hidden from us, or to be more exact, a lot of these active supermassive black holes have been overlooked because many of them seem to contain these massive dust clouds. And so technically there should be even more quasars out there, but a lot of them are just hidden and are only visible in certain wavelengths. And so the overall conclusion from the study is that there seem to be a lot of these obscured quasars in the early universe, with many more still missing and many more still hiding. With a second conclusion potentially being that this could be a direct link to the little red dots. But this can only be confirmed with future observations, which are planned for the next few months. But more importantly, hoping to find very similar signs or very similar properties in at least some of these little red dots as well. Because here by connecting BB quasars with little red dots, we can potentially find clues uncovering how some of these objects evolved into each other. But since this is only based on a handful of objects, these shell Q objects, we're not going to know more until future observations. As a matter of fact, for all we know, maybe these shell Qs are entirely different, completely independent of both little red dots and quasars, and maybe they actually do end up producing something entirely different. And so until more observations with the James Webb and additional studies, we're not going to know much more. Because for now it really looks like being back in the 1950s, we have a lot of these really bizarre discoveries nobody can explain, a lot of these observations that make no sense, and it's quite likely that in the next decade or so, our entire understanding of the universe will change completely as a result, just like it did in that era of 1950s to 1970s. I mean, this is the time when we confirmed the Big Bang Theory, but for all we know, these new observations might reveal something entirely different and something even more surprising. And so until then, check out some of the previous videos in the description. Thank you for watching, subscribe, 
Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support this channel Patreon, where you can actually find a lot more videos you've never seen before, and of course videos without any ads. Consider buying the wonderful person t-shirt in the description, or maybe support this channel by joining the channel membership that contains never before seen footage. Either way, come back tomorrow to learn something else. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.